It's been a rockin' year, but instead of releasing new songs and albums like musicians, we've been releasing new features to the Google Maps for Flutter plugin. The Google Maps platform team is excited to tell you that the hits will keep on coming, and we're taking requests. Today, I'll talk about map styling, new markers features, and heat map support. If the feature you're looking for isn't covered today, check our GitHub issue linked in the description below where we publish the roadmap of what's coming. We build this roadmap based off of the requests that people have upvoted the most, so I encourage you to use GitHub issues to file bugs and request features and use those thumbs up emojis or comment on issues that you want to upvote. For all the new features I'm mentioning today, be sure to check the Google Maps Flutter page on pub.dev to check which version number the feature is available in and what the minimum requirements are to use that feature. In my first Flutter video, I used Android Studio to edit files and emulate the running app on an Android device. Today, I'm going to try out a new IDE from Google called IDX that can emulate Flutter apps from within your browser. You can use any IDE, but because of the in-browser capabilities of IDX, you'll soon see links to open our Flutter code samples in IDX on the Google Maps Platform developer site. OK, first up, we had to add support for map IDs. A map ID is an identifier that's set up in your console to associate a map with a custom style that you've selected for the map. You can read more about cloud-based map styling at the link in the description. This map ID is key to several of the latest features in our Maps SDKs, so it's pretty important to be able to specify it in your Flutter app. It's a property of a Google Map widget, and the property is called Cloud Map ID. In my last video, I left off with adding a marker to a map. But once you learn how to add one marker, you'll have situations that call for hundreds or thousands of markers, and your map will get very crowded. For that problem, one of our top feature requests has been to support marker clustering. We added dependencies on the utility libraries for each respective SDK which provide marker clustering, and you can now cluster markers when targeting all three platforms, Android, iOS, and web. To learn how to implement marker clustering in your Flutter app, I recommend looking at the example Dart file included in the GitHub repository. People also wanted to be able to customize the size of markers on a map. There was a lot of discussion in this feature thread, especially since Flutter is a cross-platform framework and different bitmaps appear at different sizes on Android than they look on iOS devices. In the end, we figured it out and added two new classes, asset map bitmap to create a bitmap descriptor for a marker from an asset image, and bytes map bitmap to create a bitmap descriptor for a marker from an array of bytes encoded as a PNG. So now you have four ways to create a custom marker icon, and you can specify image dimensions and scaling or pixel ratios to fine tune the size. Finally, another one of our highly requested features is support for heat map layers, as seen in the Maps JavaScript API and the utility libraries for the Maps SDKs for Android and iOS. Thank you to community contributor Rexios80 for implementing this one for the Flutter community. This pull request had 143 commits over two years to get merged. Thank you for sticking with us through all the code reviews. As you can see, we're shaping this package together, which is one of the best things about Flutter and open source. I hope you're happy using these highly requested new features, and I hope you'll continue telling us what's important to you through our conversations on GitHub. We've got a few more features and fixes in the pipeline for the rest of this year, so watch that change log to see what's new. And subscribe to the Google Maps Platform YouTube channel for announcements and tips. Until next time, happy mapping.